What's a, what's your typical day in the life like? Like the people love to hear about the day in the life, especially when they're trying to do a role that they're interested in. Mm-hmm. What's a typical day in the life for you? Man, it's man. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's mainly building out environments and troubleshooting over and over again. You have this moment where it's a bit overwhelming, but it 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 it, it, it gets better. So uh, just to answer your question, I normally just go to when I clock in. I, I do my first three four meetings in the morning, and um, I, I get on my projects more of building out environments, making sure uh, logs are being ingested properly. If certain clients want to see particular logs or have dashboards created, uh, I do that also. I, I, I do too much, honestly, and it's not just Splunk. It's Logic Monitor, App Dynamics, Cribble. <laughs> but it's it's more CribbleCon was happening at the same time Splunk Conf was happening. A word? Yep. Oh, man. I do want to check them both out. I should have went to the one this year, though. But, yeah, overall, it's mainly just architect, like strictly architect. I, I've i done slight engineering things, but it's more just making sure everything is properly connected because with the company I work for now, it's more about availability in the CIA, and we never go down. So my main job, <clears throat> excuse me, my main job is to make <laughs> sure that everything is up. Yeah, yeah. I thought about Fat Joe. <laughs> And what? What song he's on? Love, slow down, baby. Some I don't go down, baby. Whatever Fat Joe say, but I just Never thought about that. It. I know you did. It's what's love. <laughs> Ashanti and Fat Joe. What's love what's got love to do got, with it? Oh, I thought it was a movie. It is too. But <laughs> <laughs> so this, is what y'all need to understand too. Now, what's that salary jump from Experian to OCC as doing the infrastructure engineer? Oh man, uh, drum roll, please. <laughs> the base is one eighty, and total comp is two. 14, I think. I can't remember that part. I got bad memory. But yeah, it, it, it was a huge jump. But the reason why that jump was so huge was because I, I, I can, you know what? I can put them on game about this. I was telling yeah, them. Go tell them right there. So when, let's say, you, if you want to learn about Splunk, this is the, the simplest way to do it. Get you some EC2 instances and put some heavy forwarders, universal forwarders, search heads, indexers, all the nine yards, deployment server, and just build your own environment. Once you build your own environment, Splunk. It's, it's not, it's a, that's as simple as it gets, but with, with, with less detail, but you, you know how to do Splunk architect at that point, the ins and outs. So at the end of the day, it that's what helped me get this job. So, But you answered, I was going to ask you, like, what would somebody need to know? For Splunk and guys, also he only has an associates. Oh, so he only has an associates degree, and I highlighted that because either we're pushing boot camp or we're pushing for your degree. It really don't matter. I tell people all the time, if you got the skill set, they'll hire you. Yeah, that's true. That's the biggest thing. Now the hardest thing is for his skill set, you'd have to take a lot of time to learn that, and you probably be best from learning from a person like him. That does it in order to get the skill set. If not, then you might not have a skill set because you're gonna have to be able to talk that language and understand it. Like even right now, shout out to one of my clients. He recently had a, a take home assessment, and I helped him with it. One, because it was two. That's the other part you get when you work with me is not the fact that I'm just doing your resumes and networking. Now I'm in the trenches with you. If you get something like that, I'm gonna help you. And I showed him how you would do a project if you had to actually do something for a company. And I showed him how to be very thorough with it and to bring up examples, references, and everything. And I know for a fact we did the best take-home assessment. And I'm not saying we as in, like, I did everything for him. I just gave him suggestions of what he can look into, and then I reviewed it and said it looks good. But that's one of the things we, when we say, like, uh, shout-out to the RIP to the Godfather, man. I was watching something from Kevin Samuels a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago. And he was actually when he was talking to the men, and he was telling the men about – how they need to invest in themselves. They might have to invest in coaching or something like that because mentorship, like you said, is something that's not too formal and it just comes like in a different way. Everyone is not going to have a mentor. So sometimes you have to pay for that coaching. So sometimes what you're looking for, you may have to pay for it. Like we, me and Broadus talked about last uh, episode, like you got to put in that investment time. Like you said, you want a company to invest six figures in you, but you want to invest any figures in your life. You want everything for free. That's facts. And that's why you might be hitting that roadblock. You're like, dang, am I really doing what I need to do? Am I talking to who I need to talk to? What's the barrier to talk to them? Think about it. He has, so he has access to me, 
I've gave him access to Tavion for years. And there are other people. You can't normally get access to these type of people without knowing somebody that knows somebody. That's true. It ain't about what you know. It's about who knows you. Ah, uh, side note. Man, remember I told Tavion I was trying to get in cybersecurity and my fire stick got hit. And we was laughing at you. <laughs> this dude kept on. But that's another thing why I told you I stopped using the fire sticks. He couldn't even watch stuff because the internet would either stop working or go slow. Man, Tavion was blowing me. Uh, <laughs> I forgot what my password was, but that thing was simple, man. He was like, are you trying to get in cybersecurity? You got a five-character password. and I remember that. <laughs> man, that was embarrassing. Shout out to Tavion, man. Definitely. Now, would you say you are a principal level now? Yes, I would say that. But it's, it's it, there's a lot more to learn. Well, with Splunk, is I feel like I exhausted all my resources with that. So that's why I'm trying to go towards my um, consultant certification. I'm just trying to see what else I can learn. I do want to get more into the enterprise security side and the Phantom. So I'm going to reach out to Kenneth. I'll reach out uh, to Kenneth about that. Phantom or XOR. Both of them. Palo Alto. Uh, if you know how to interact with the different Palo Alto apps, that's money. Word. Now put that on a cracker, dude. <laughs> that money. <laughs> That W sauce. Uh, man, I meant to ask you this because it's going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. How would your wife describe what you do for a living? Hey, man, she she actually, somebody asked her at her job what I do, and she she told them something about income. She was like, she I, I monitor transactions, and once the, the transaction failed or fraud, I got to figure out where to go. And I send them the IP address, and I don't know, call the police or something. I'm like, what? Like, nah, this, that's not what I do. She honestly didn't. Let me rephrase that. She knew I worked at OCC, but she didn't know where it was. She thought it was Experian at first, so she, I don't know. <laughs> also, this is another question I just thought about too. Being that your first couple of jobs weren't like, well. The role you did at CSRA just wasn't like a role that people was gravitating towards, but yeah. no one knows the theory was. How beneficial do you think it was for your career, the fact that you have an experience on your resume? Man, like when recruiters reach out to me, they say, oh, I see you have a, a Fortune 500 on your resume. I would like to reach out to you so we can discuss more about future potential jobs with else, uh, let's say, which I know I, I did talk to one about Google. I think I, I was bragging about that one, but it was just a, a recruiter reaching out to me. I'm like, oh, shit, Google. But nah, I, after having experience my resume, I've recently had continuous amount of recruiters just reach out to me over and over again just because of ex experience. But the reason why I said that is because I've told people this. It's one of my tweets back in the day where I said, like, the companies you work at matter. It's, it's dating. It's the dude who used to the baddies because, like, all his chicks, like, he got a type, they all bad. And then, you know, the dudes who used to just, they regular degler. It's like the same thing for people's resumes. Sometimes people don't want to take a, a lesser role at a bigger known company because they're either trying to, like, you, for example, when you didn't want to do the knock gig because you was just like, I don't want to do this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do cyber. But I'm like, just take an income. It's a decent name. It's in the payment card industry. Just trust me. Mm -hmm. That led to Experian. That led to OCC. Mm -hmm. Same thing with me and the companies I worked for in the last two with J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Finance companies always reached out to me. I've been reached out to Fidelity for a big bag before. So it's the same thing. Also, the industry you're in, the niche you're in, makes sense. And it will help you get jobs because if you already understand the industry they're going to find you oh, okay they're in hospitality they're in retail they're in finance they're in tech they're in transportation gaming whatever all these different industries companies like that that's in there that are, that are big in that market real estate they'll reach out to you shout out to uh, what's her name Kendra she just I think she posted about her getting a gig at uh, Zillow and I think she was at Microsoft before that really yeah and I think she had a background of being a teacher I think so. I, nice. I can't remember. But like I said, names matter. So if you are chasing something, but you're not getting it, take a step back, reassess, see if a good name is out there biting. Go work there, get your experience, and run it up. That's literally all you got to do. 